Greetings to those interested in learning about confidence intervals. At this point, we should have a complete understanding of the concepts of confidence intervals when we are estimating the population mean mu. Now we are interested in making inferences about categorical variables. Pause here to think of an example of a categorical variable. Let's refer back to the populations from video one. Students attending a college and bags of pretzels produced by a food company. Examples of categorical variables describing these individuals in these populations are voting preference of the students and the color of the bags of pretzels. Therefore, we can define a categorical variable as one that places individuals into one of several groups. Here are possible values of these two variables. Calculating the mean using the values of these variables is impossible. However, we can count the occurrences of, for example, the number of students who approve of the job the president is doing. From that count, we can calculate the proportion of students who approve by dividing the number who say they approve by the total number sampled. The question now is can we use a sample proportion to make inferences about a population proportion? Yes, we can and we will learn how to construct a confidence interval in just one minute. For labeling purposes, the population proportion is labeled P and the sample proportion is labeled P hat. Let's consider estimating the president's approval rating among college students at a specific university. Assume that the number of students at that university is 25,000. It would be quite difficult to ask every single student whether they approve or disapprove of the job the president is doing. However, if we take a sample of students, we can use the sample data to make inferences about the population because we will assume the sample we take comes from a sampling distribution of all possible p hats. To illustrate this, imagine I have access to the population of the 25,000 students and knowledge that 12,907 approve of the president's performance. Pause here to calculate the population proportion. Our population proportion is 51.63%. If I take a sample from that population, I could obtain a sample proportion p hat. In addition, if I take many samples from that population and calculate many sample proportions, I know these sample proportions will vary from sample to sample. I built a sampling distribution of p hats by taking 1,000 samples of size 100 from our population and obtained 1,000 sample proportions. Here is the histogram. Even though the population values are only approve or disapprove, the distribution of sample proportions can be considered quantitative in nature, where the values of the sample proportions fall between 0 and 1. Since the sampling distribution data are quantitative, we can find the mean and standard deviation of the distribution of sample proportions. The mean of these 1,000 proportions is 0.5163, and the standard deviation is 0.0485. Also, the shape of this distribution looks approximately normal. From our data, we see the population proportion of 0.51628 is approximately equal to the mean of the sampling distribution of p hats, which is 0.51625. In general, it is known that p hat is an unbiased estimate of p because the mean of the sampling distribution of p hats is equal to the population proportion p. In addition, I will inform you without deriving it that the standard deviation of this distribution is very close to the quantity, the square root of p1 minus p over n. The standard deviation of the 1,000 sample proportions equals 0 0.048, which is close to 0 0.045, which is obtained by using the population proportion 0.51628 in this formula. Therefore, we could assume the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal with mean p and this quantity as the standard deviation. Also, for your information, this works best when n is large and p is close to 0.5.
Textbooks differ on the exact values, but we could say that this sampling distribution can be treated as approximately normal when NP is greater than 10 and N times 1 minus P is greater than 10. In reality, we will not know the opinions of a population of 25,000 students, so we will try to estimate it. Let's use one of our samples of size 100 to construct a confidence interval to estimate the population proportion of the president's approval rating. The structure of a confidence interval remains the same. In words, it is the point estimate of the parameter, plus or minus, the critical value, times the standard deviation, or standard error. We know that p hat is our estimate from our sample, and we would use a z star critical value because our sampling distribution can be treated as normal. However, do you notice an issue that may arise if we attempt to use the standard deviation of p hat? Pause here to think about it. The issue is, if we use this formula, we are using the unknown population proportion in the calculation of the standard deviation. To handle this problem, it has been proven that we may use the sample proportion p hat to estimate p in this calculation. If we make this estimate and use this standard error, we must be more cautious with our calculations. Thus, we could change our rule of thumb to np greater than or equal to 15 and n1 minus p greater than or equal to 15. Here is the confidence interval formula. Using the first sample of 100 students, I determined my p hat is 0.49. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion. Here are the results. The interpretation of this confidence interval is exactly the same as before. Seen here, we could be 95% confident that the interval 0.392 to 0.588 captures the true unknown proportion of people in the population who approve of the president's performance. If we constructed many confidence intervals, 95% of those intervals will capture the true unknown population proportion. To check the last part of the interpretation, I graph the first 100 confidence intervals seen in the next five graphs, 20 at a time. Pause and rewind to count the number that did not capture the population proportion. We discovered that one interval did not capture our assumed population proportion of 0.5163. In my 1,000 samples, 965 intervals captured the population proportion of 0.5163, which is close to what I expected. Thank you again for watching these videos on confidence intervals. I hope you now understand the concepts, ideas, calculations, and interpretations of confidence intervals. Please provide feedback you have in the comments below these videos.